Hi everyone, um, welcome to episode 27 of the Knitting Expat podcast. My name is Mina and today I am coming to you from my hotel room in New York. Um, today is actually Thursday the 10th of September but you guys probably won't be seeing this until the coming Monday which I believe is the 14th of September is when this is going to be published um, on YouTube and I'll explain a bit more about why I'm doing it that way in a bit. Um, like I said, my name is Mina. You can find me on Ravelry as Mina86. You can find me on Instagram as Mina Philip. And I'm on Periscope as Mina Philip. I haven't done any scopes yet or anything, but you can find me there if you want to. Um, you can find the group for the podcast on Ravelry as the Knitting Expat podcast. And the show notes for this episode and all other episodes are on the knittingexpat.wordpress. Sorry, knittingexpat.wordpress.com. Yes, that's right. Is the blog, and I also sell project bags on Etsy as Mina makes. All of that is linked down below in the description box on YouTube and in the episode thread on Ravelry. So you can find me all over the place. Um, yeah, so I want to say thank, welcome and thank you to everyone who's a new viewer and a returning viewer. I'm so happy to have you all here. Um, I apologise for my setup. It's a little bit, uh, it's not the best. <laughs> it's not quite what I would have liked, but um, I'm basically stuck with what I've got. The reason why I'm doing it this way is I usually film and upload on Mondays, but this coming Monday is going to be spent entirely travelling. We leave New York, we're in New York at the moment, my husband and I, um, we live in Bahrain at the moment, if you're new and you don't know, um, but we're in New York at the moment because my husband's um, studying and he's got some, uh, he is, he's doing a part-time MBA and every other month he's in New York or London so uh, for classes and so I joined him on this trip. We're in New York until Sunday night. And we leave Sunday night, but we don't actually get back to Bahrain until around 4 a.m. on Tuesday. So the entirety of Monday is spent traveling or in transit. We have a four hour layover in London. Um, so I'm hoping that this, I'll be able to get this uploaded and ready to go on YouTube. And then during those four hours that we're laid over in London, I can hit the publish button and get the episode up for you guys on the normal day, maybe at a random hour, I don't entirely know when that's going to work out, but I'm hoping it'll work out. Um, yes, yeah, so that's why I'm filming now, and today it's quite a grey and dreary day in New York, which I'm more than happy with. The last few days have been increasingly hot and muggy and very humid, and so the rain was very much welcome. Um, it's a bit thunderstormy and grey and overcast, so there's not much light coming in from the window, so I've got all the possible lights I can on in the hotel room, but you guys know, if you know what hotel rooms are like, they have really poor lighting at the best of times. Um, so I've got like the reading light, I'm sat on the bed, so apologies for any camera shake because my phone, which I'm recording on, is currently is precariously leaning against the box of tea which is sat on top of my hand luggage suitcase on the bed. And so every time I move, the whole bed moves because it's the bed. So I apologise for any shakiness. But um, I'm sat on the bed and I've got the reading light on which is this light over above me and I realise that I'm kind of backlit at the moment so it's probably not going to be the best for showing colours and, and yarns and stuff but we'll do it, I'll do what I can. I figured it was more important to have an episode out to you guys than miss a week. Because um, if I start doing that when I'm travelling, I'm just going to be missing loads of episodes and I don't want to do that. So I really enjoy filming these. And um, yeah, and on that note, I'm actually, well, since we left Bahrain and have been travelling, I am so behind on watching podcasts and catching up with you guys and all the other, all the other podcasters who've been putting up episodes and stuff and I don't think I truly realised how many podcasts I really follow and watch until I can't watch them for a few days and then you see how much I've started to pile up and it's um, I'm slowly, slowly but surely working my way through them now. Um, and really quickly, well not so really quickly, but before we move on I wanted to say I was contacted by a lovely viewer 
who's uh, who's called Agata, and she's I believe she's from Poland, and she uh, is a knitwear designer, and she's offered a discount code for all of you lovely viewers of my podcast, and the discount code is Knitting Expat, all one word, lower all lowercase, and that will give you fifteen percent off all of her any of her patterns in her Ravelry store. And that code is valid for one week. So from the day this podcast goes up on the 14th of September for one week only. So make sure you head on over and check out her patterns. She has some really some really interesting patterns up there. So make sure you go and check those out. And thank you so much to Agatha for the generous discount code. And so I will have her Ravelry shop linked in the show notes and in the Ravelry thread for this episode. Um, so yeah, like I said, make sure you check her out. And I have one moving on to the main body of the uh, episode, as it were. I have one finished object to show you guys this week, and I am so excited by this one because it's my new shawl design, and I'm so ecstatic that I can finally show it to you all. Um, get it the right way around, and this is the shawl. And it is absolutely ginormous, which I love. It is like a big squishy hug. And there's the other end of it. It is not blocked properly. I do need to block this again when I get home. I had brought my T-pins to block it in the hotel room, but um, I started pinning it to the bed and realized my T-pins were gonna leave massive holes in the bedding. And I didn't really wanna do that. So I just laid it out. Um, laid it out flat on the bed. I actually had to lay it out diagonally and even then the ends almost didn't fit onto the bed. So, and the points do need to be blocked out properly with pins because they're sort of curling up at the moment. But you can sort of tell what that's gonna look like. It's got the leafy motif and you can see the leaf motif in the middle. I don't know if you can see that really well. I'm trying to look through the holes in the lace to see what you're seeing. Hopefully you can still hear me. So I am so excited by this shawl. It is massive. This is the larger size. Um, it is sized for a large and a medium. Uh, the large one uses almost two full skeins of fingering yarn for the for the body. I used Baron Vuller yarns uh, dyed by the lovely Vicky. And so yeah, I used Baron Vuller yarns in her barefoot sock base and the green is the forest colorway and the gray is the best gray ever. Now I know for the green, cause I finished it before I left home and so I was able to weigh the, the green section. I used, I had 20 grams left over and each of my skeins were 102 grams. So it was slightly over a hundred and that's 400 meters to 100 grams, so that's used. Uh, my brain is failing to do maths right now. Um, 184, 184 grams, I believe, for the body. And for the border, I have used the majority of a full skein for the border on the larger shawl. So I, I, I believe if, I, my, if my maths was correct, I've used around 60 to 70 grams for the border. So the majority of three full skeins of fingering weight yarn went into this. So I'm, I'm, I imagine it's roughly in the 1000 to 1100 meter range for yardage on this shawl. Like I said, it's a massive warm hug. It is way wider, way, way wider. What was wrong with my English today? It is a lot longer than my wingspan if I hold it out yeah, I can't, and this will grow even more when I block it properly. This was just um, soaked in water and laid out flat to dry. There was no wool wash, no pinning, no nothing. So I know this will get slightly bigger once it is washed properly and blocked. Um, it's really soft, it's really squishy, it is lovely. And Baron Vuller um, fingering yarn is definitely a thicker fingering. It's definitely what I would call the heavy fingering. It's quite plump, but it's really, really good. And it, it just makes it that much warmer and softer and cuddlier uh, to knit with. And this pattern is currently being tested. I have some lovely testers 
who I contacted from the test knitting thread. So thank you all so much for um, being quite quick to get back to me and offering to test this for me. So yeah, I'm so excited and so I'm hoping for this pattern to be um, released in sometime in the beginning or early-ish October time. I'm trying to give my testers four weeks to knit this because it's it's a shawl so it, and it is a minimum of two skeins for the smaller size so so yeah i want to give them time to actually be able to do it properly uh what other information can i give you about the shawl oh it was knit on four millimeter needles i guess that's kind of important <laughs> as well it's four millimeter needles with like a heavier fingering weight but you could use a regular fingering weight, that would be fine. I actually think if you were knitting the large size, it would look really good in lace weight as well. Um, you could do the large size instructions on lace weight with a slightly smaller needle. So it would be slightly smaller than this, but with lace weight, I think it would be really nice and airy. You can see the, the leafy motif there. I'm not sure how well you can see that in this lighting there. I think that's a bit better. You can sort of see the... There we go. So like you saw me earlier, I wore it over my shoulders, it's perfect for that. You can also wear it, if I can get this on. Around your neck like this, nice and all squished up. Or you can sort of spread it out a bit and have it cover your shoulders. Wear it a bit, almost poncho-like. Something like that. Nice and warm and snuggly, and then the tails. You can just have that brought into the middle here and that keeps your neck and this front chest area more covered. So this would be quite nice to wear it like this, maybe like under a coat or under a jacket. Squishy. Yeah. Anyway, I love it. I'm sorry for all the camera shaking. I don't I I don't have another way around this. Um Yeah, oh I guess I ought to I brought the hat and socks with me as well. So this is the hat. And the socks. And if you hadn't been able to tell, I managed to get some sock blockers, but more about that later. These are the socks. So you can see them better there. And the hat and the shawl. And this is going to be my first pattern collection. And I have decided, and I'll share the name with you now since it's all finished and I can share the name with you all. Um, it is going to be the Vida collection. Uh, so the Vida socks, the Vida hat, and the Vida shawl. And that's actually my mum's name, Vida. So I've decided to name this collection after my mum for a number of reasons. Um, one, I think the name works because vida in Spanish, if you don't know, means life. And I think leaves are quite symbolic of life. And, um, and so I think that name works quite well in that respect. And also because, I mean, my mum loves gardening. She loves being outside. She loves um, being quite creative as well. She's a very creative person. I get all of my creativity from her. So um, again, I think leaves are quite appropriate for that. Uh, and like I said, I get all of my creativity from her. She's always been very encouraging with um, the creative side of things and all of my um, interests in artistic things. I'm not an artist in the traditional sense of drawing or painting, but I enjoy creating a lot um, and doing things with my hands and making things. And my mum's always been like that as well. She's always encouraged that in me growing up. I mean, my brother was never so much interested into that sort of stuff, but I was. And so we always bonded over that. And since I started knitting, she's been incredibly encouraging and very, and with sewing as well. Um, it's just been great to have that support and have her encouragement. She's always going on about how, um, how proud she is of me and stuff. So it's always been, um, it's just been nice to have that support there and to know that my parents are quite um, encouraging with all of that. I'm sorry if none of this is making any sense, but this is just my a small way for me to say thank you to my mum for always being there and always being so supportive of um, my crazy, <laughs> crazy creative and um, 
adventures, I guess. So, this by no means is like enough in any way to say thank you for all of that, but it's just a small way for me to say thank you. So, dedicate these three patterns to my mum. And, and yeah, so uh, I think that pretty much covers it. <laughs> I um I had intended on the pattern for the hat and socks to be released by now, but I just didn't have the time to take pictures before um before we left for the trip, which was what I intended on doing. But and it's just so grey and dreary at the moment. I've been so busy up until today. Today's like the first sort of um day when I don't have much planned. And it's a bit grey and dreary to go out and take photos today. And plus I'm on my own, so I'm not entirely sure how I would manage that. I didn't bring a tripod with me. But um, I want to try and get pictures of these taken soon. Um, so I can get those patterns released as soon as possible. If they're not already released by the time this video comes out, they will be by the end of the week that this episode is released. Because by the time... Basically, it'll be released by the end of, uh, hopefully, by the weekend. So, so yeah, it's the Vida collection, named after my mum, and I hope she likes them. Uh, yeah, okay, so that was that. Um, what was I going to say? Lost my train of thought. Whips, whips, that was it. Works in progress. I have two works in progress. I have what I am referring to as my mistake blueberry waffle socks. And I'll explain why they're mistake blueberry waffles in a second. But that's being knit out of this Lana Grossa Fantasy yarn, which was sent to me by a very lovely viewer of the podcast who wanted to remain anonymous. So I won't say who you are, but thank you very much. You know who you are. And that's the yarn. Lana Grossa Fantasy. It's colour number 4710. And I'm knitting these on 2.5mm needles. And they are mistake blueberry waffle socks because if you've ever seen the blueberry waffle pattern, it's knit two rows, then two rows of knit two, pearl two, rib. And it gives you the sort of like waffle pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, so I'm not really giving anything away. But what I ended up doing was I knit three rows and then did two rows of knit two, pearl two. And I did that at the beginning and then I just, I couldn't be bothered to rip back. And so I just kept going with it. I thought, why not? It still looks like a waffle pattern. It's just got one extra knit row. And it's actually made it really easy to count. So each repeat is five rows, so I can quite easily keep track of my rows that way as well. And I'm just about to start the heel which is why it looks like this, because I was just going to start the heel when I thought I should probably film this episode. So that's what I've done. That's one sock, one pair of socks rather. And that is being, and that's being knit on 2.5 millimeter Addi lace needles. It's been a while since I've used metal needles to knit socks and I do like them. I have always, I've never had any issues with them. I like the slickness of them. I like that they go quickly. The reason why I stopped using them for a while was they were hurting my hands really quickly. I was getting numbness in my middle finger and um, I was dropping stitches like all left, right and centre all over the place and I found wooden needles. I don't drop stitches and they don't hurt, hurt my hands as much so I can knit on them longer. But I think since, since the last time I used those to knit, uh, used metal needles to knit socks with, I think my gauge has loosened up a little bit, which means that I'm not holding my needles as tightly and I'm being a bit more conscious about trying not to hold my needles too tightly, um, which is making it easier on my hands. And that project is in one of my Mina Makes bags. This is the Floral Dots print. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's still one of these left in the shop. The shop's on holiday at the moment. It'll be back up in a few days. Well, actually, no, by the time you see this, it will be back up. So I think, I believe there's one more of these still in the shop. So. Uh, and my second project is in another one of my Mina Makes bags. This is one of my drawstring bags. Uh, oh, 
sorry. And this is another pair of socks. And these are some crazy Zalbable socks. These will probably be for my brother. He's always like green. And there we go. Again, just plain vanilla. These are also on 2.5 millimeter needles. I'm finding that I'm enjoying knitting my socks on 2.5 millimeter needles a little bit more than 2.25s. They go a bit faster, obviously, but also the, because the gauge isn't quite as tight, it's, um, again, like I said, it's less painful on my hands. And I'm thinking, um, like I do enjoy the fabric I get from 2.25s. It's definitely not as loose. It's definitely a lot denser. Like. I mean, this isn't too loose either. You can just about see the light coming through. It's not, but it's not bulletproof. It's not like really super dense, but you don't really need that so much. I don't think, I don't know. I guess it just depends how quickly you wear through socks. It'd be interesting to see how quickly my brother wears through these, if he wears through them. Um, uh, yeah, cause the socks I made for my dad, I did on 2.25 and it's also crazy salvable. So it'll be interesting to see the difference between the two once these are finished and see how those wear. So those are on 2.5mm Knit Pit, Knitters Pride or Knit Pro, I can't remember which, Knit Pro uh, Symphony Needles, the rainbow ones. So my Mina Mix bag. Like I said, that was crazy salvable in like the green brown colourway. Um, so that is it for works in progress. I have another project that I want to talk to you about but I haven't started yet is the Curious Handmade Summertide Mystery Knit Along. It's one that I signed up to take part in. I've got the pattern. The The first clue was released today, the Thursday today that I'm recording. Um, but And I've got the yarn for it. I'm not going to show you the yarn for it yet. I bought it while I was here. But it's not wound up. So I can't start the knit along until I get back, which is fine. I'm sure I'll be able to catch up pretty quickly. And I'm really excited about that one. I'm quite happy with the colours I've picked. I'm pretty sure they'll work out quite nicely. And I'm excited to jump in on that one. So I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone else's um, colour choices and seeing how the project starts to knit up for everyone. So that should be fun. Um, Moving on to knit along news. Knit along news. So the Sunrays cowl has finally finished. On the, uh, finished a few days ago on the seventh of September. I actually closed the thread on the morning of the eighth when I finally remembered to do it. So thank you to everyone who took part and who uh, joined in on the cowl. I believe by the end of it there was around twenty entries. I think. Let me just double check. I've got my laptop here with my show notes on it in front of me, so I can have a quick look on Ravelry. The Sunrise Cow. Okay, yeah, there were 26 finished objects, so that's amazing. Thank you so much to everyone who took part, who purchased the pattern, and who took part in the knit along. I know there was one person who did two, um, two shawls for the entry for the cow, which was great. I believe there was actually one person who knit a Sunrise shawl in rainbow yarn and finished in September and so I was actually able to enter her shawl into all three of my knit alongs which was amazing I thought that was great um, so that's actually finished now I was going to do the drawings today but I don't have the prizes to show you so what I'm going to do is I will wait and do the prize drawings uh, for the sun for the sunray shawl next episode that way I can show you the prizes as I draw them Sorry, I think my phone or any other phone in the room went off. Um, then the other cows I've got going is the rainbow cow, which is knit anything in rainbow yarn. It can be whatever you want, as long as it thinks, and even the yarn doesn't have to be like a true rainbow, it can be anything that thinks it's a rainbow. And uh, that is running until the 30th of September, so make sure you enter your finished objects for that. And the September cow, or the hash hashtag sept cow, which is anything with the letter S knit along, anything that begins with the letter S, shawls, scarves, um, sweaters, socks, um, or a project that begins with S. So if you knit a hat, but the project, the pattern name begins with an S, then that counts too. And that will also be open until 30th of September. And the, 
I have some prizes for that already. I've, I've shown you some of the prizes um, a few episodes back, but I think I'm still waiting on a couple of things to come in. And once that's all come in, then I can show you the prizes all over again. Hopefully that'll be next week. And knitting and crochet is okay for this knit along as well. So, and whips are welcome. I think whips will always be welcome in my knit alongs because I think it's, sometimes people have a lot on the needles already and then they want to take part in a knit along but they don't necessarily want to go cast on something new straight away because they want to clear some things. And so I think allowing whips is always a, always a fun thing to do. Uh, moving on to Q&A section, I had one question this week on the Ravelry threads which actually requires me to show you something I don't have with me. So I'm going to save that one for next week. Um, I did get a couple of general questions on Instagram on some of the photos that I've been posting from our trip along the lines of um, how did you get your knitting needles on the plane? and do you get strange looks knitting in public in New York? And did you bring an extra suitcase for all the yarn you're buying? <laughs> so my answer to those questions, the first one with regarding needles on planes and needles while knitting while traveling in general, I've never had any trouble with my knitting needles um, on planes. I've never had them taken away from me. I've The only time my knitting has ever been searched when I'm going through security is because I've forgotten to take scissors out of my bag when they were too big to go through security. Airport, airport security has never been concerned about my knitting. Um, so in the, in, in the last year and a half since I started knitting, whenever I've flown I've always taken my knitting with me and I've never had any trouble with it. So, so that's that really. I The only precaution I make is I make sure I take needles that if they were confiscated that I wouldn't necessarily mind. I'd pack spare needles in my checked luggage in case that happened. I try and stick to taking wooden or bamboo needles on onto actual planes that way then uh, when they go through the scanner they don't necessarily show up they just look like a pen or a pencil. Um, so I avoid taking metal needles where possible onto planes just I have done though I have taken metal needles onto planes without issues but usually if I do take metal needles I'll make sure they're ones that I really don't care about all that much like the anyway um as for knitting in public in New York I've not really had any strange looks at all I mean I've had a few people staring or whatever occasionally but I'm either with my husband or I'm on my own and if I'm on my own I usually have my music on on the subway or something so people aren't really going to bother me in, like whilst I'm listening to music on the subway but I've not really had any sort of negative interactions or yeah sort of encounters with knitting in public over here so far so that's been great I've never had any negative um, sort of responses to my knitting in public ever so I, I don't know if that's just me or if anyway um, and as for if I brought an extra suitcase for yarn, well, yes and no. <laughs> yes, I did actually pack an extra bag, an extra sort of like a duffel bag that um, we could use as like an overflow bag to take stuff back to Bahrain with. But I ended up leaving it in London. And what ended up happening is I got a little bit confused which airline we were flying with. And I thought we were flying with United to the States where you can actually check two bags per person. But we're actually flying with American and you can only check one bag per person with American and um, to check a, to check an extra bag they will charge you $100 for it so I was like no it's okay I, I, I can manage with just the one bag so we left the second bag in the UK and I'd ordered a bunch of stuff to my parents not like a, not a huge amount of stuff but just some things um, mostly books I'd ordered to my parents um, which is basically what's gone into the second suitcase that we brought with us. I stuffed it full of um, the books that I got and the other bits that I'd picked up, the things I bought while I was in London and birthday presents that I was kindly gifted by my family. So 
I so that suitcase that duffel bag is now and I packed it with other things that I decided I wasn't going to bring to New York in the end and Perry put some stuff in there as well so there's uh, there's that suitcase um, or bag rather that's waiting in London and we've got four hour layover in London on our way back where we have to change terminals and change flights and recheck in and stuff so my family are going to come down to the airport to see us uh, say a quick hello and my mum to give me my bag so because uh, on our flight back to Bahrain we can check two bags each so it's not it's not an issue that way the issue was from the states so an answer to that question no we don't have an extra bag with us over here but both of our suitcases were around 10 kilos under the limit each so there's an extra 20 kilos worth of space which I do not think I'm going to need weight wise my my main concern is going to be about the um, capacity because uh, well, they're yarn squishes, so it's not that big a deal. I'm sure it'll be fine. Like, I, I'm really not that concerned. So, um, so that's that. Uh, my question to you guys this week is quite a simple one. How did you find out about my podcast? I'm 27 episodes in now, and I'm curious to know, where did you hear about me? Um, I know some people, I know where some people have found out about me through other podcasts or through, like, the YouTube recommends um su youtube suggestions and so on online and things um so it'd be interesting to know where you've heard about me from I've, i mean some people when they've introduced themselves in the introduction thread have said where they heard about me from and stuff and i always find that really fascinating to know how you stumbled across it um so yeah so if you wouldn't mind letting me know i would i would love to hear it and uh, I just love hearing from you guys in general. So thank you so much to everyone who has been in touch whilst I've been away. I'm sorry if I've been a bit slow getting back to you. I'm, um, I feel like I'm really falling behind at the moment, but I know it's fine. I just usually try and stay on top of things so I don't fall behind too much. Anyway, um, some of the ways that I find new podcasts is obviously through listening to other podcasts. Uh, podcasters always mention the podcast they've been enjoying and I find that's quite quite a good way to hear about new podcasts um, obviously another one is YouTube recommendations Those, that's also a good way of hearing about new ones um, Instagram sometimes you'll see people posting about a new podcast that they found on Instagram and I find that's usually um, not a bad way of hearing about it and also another one that I figured out recently was, I guess this only really works if you're a podcaster yourself, is if you check your subscribers list on YouTube, I didn't really realise that you could check that until quite recently. <laughs> and I went and checked and I was like, oh, okay. And then, I, and then I found a few podcasts. I have found a few podcasts that way as well. Um, I have a list of about five or six new podcasts that I want to check out. So once I've checked those out, if I like them, I will definitely let you guys know about it. And um, But I'm not sure when I'll get around to checking them out at the moment. I'm falling behind on the ones that I already follow. So I will uh, have, a, have a busy week catching up when I get back. Um, as for shop updates, uh, nothing new at the moment. There will be new things hopefully coming soon. My schedule for September is looking to be quite hectic at the moment, so I'm not sure if I'm going to have anything up before the end of the month. I don't. I think the last time I podcasted, I, really, I did say that I wasn't anticipating having anything new up for a while. Um, I do have a few custom orders that I'm hoping to get done by the end of the month and get those off of my plate first before I do anything else for the shop. But um, the shop should be open again now and there is still quite a bit of stuff in stock, so feel free to go have a look. Um, right, so I thought I'd move on to acquisitions. I'm not going to show you everything that I've bought so far because it would just take forever. But, um, and also the lighting isn't great, so I'm not really sure how well the colours are going to show up. But I thought I'd show you a few things that I got whilst I have been here. So, first place we went to that I bought stuff was from Lion Brand, the Lion Brand Studios in New York. And... I already showed you the sock blockers that I got, and I got these. I actually got these from Lime, from the Lime Brand Studios. They're the same ones that they sell in Loop in London. Um, when I did pop into Loop while I was in London over the weekend, 
uh, they'd run out of the size I needed. I need the medium size and they only had small and large left so I couldn't get them there but I got them here from Lion Brand and that worked out perfectly fine and they're great and I love them. I'm happy to have sock blockers now. So that's the first thing I picked up. Then I also picked up a couple of skeins of their suckies just sort of neutral cream colour plain sock yarn and this is going to be for me to try my hand at a little bit of dyeing. I've never tried to dye yarn. I won some, um, I believe it's Queen food dyes from from Hannah from the Rose Hip Knit podcast in the Travel Cal that she did a while ago. And she's also she's now running a dye long, um, a long, at the moment. And I'm hoping to give that a little go once we get back and enter something in there. What I'm thinking of doing is breaking these up into smaller mini skeins. Because it's gonna be food dye, I'm not expecting great color longevity and stuff. So I'm not entirely sure what I'll do. But I think what I'll do is I'll definitely break one of them up into mini skeins and try out a bunch of different colors on each one. And then those can go into my sock yarn blanket and maybe some, some for swaps and stuff. Um, and then, I'll see what I'll do with the second one, whether I'll want to dye the whole thing in one sort of like crazy colorway to do socks in, or if I also want to break this up into mini skeins. We'll see, but I got two to play around with because I don't really have bare yarn to play with and this is relatively cheap and um, I won't be overly sad if something goes wrong. And I also picked up some of this stuff, these two colours, which I love. I love mustard, yellow, and grey. Just grey and yellow in jello in general. In jello, in general. Um, and this is Lime Brand Collection. So this is from their luxury line of yarns, and this is the Angora Merino. I think that's upside down. Angora Merino. You can look there. I don't know how well you can see that. It's 80% extra fine merino, 20% angora. And oh, is this, this is so soft and so fluffy. And so this is a DK weight yarn. And oh, they had so many beautiful colors. Not so many, they had quite a lot of beautiful colors of this yarn. And it's actually really affordably priced. I believe it was around $8 for 50 grams which I think it's 50 grams. Yeah, 50 grams, which considering it's a luxury fiber blend of Merino and Angora, it's um, it's not bad. Usually yarns with Angora in it are quite a bit more expensive than that. And you get pretty good yardage, I believe. It's around 120 meters, 131 yards in 50 grams. I've got 100 grams in two colors, or rather one ball of each. I'm thinking a really nice sort of either a squishy hat or a cowl or something, something next to skin because this is just so soft and it just needs to be something you can snuggle with. I might just use it as a pillow. I did want to get more but I was just like, I can always come back. I'll be back again. It's not going to be my last time. Um, I picked up some more Eucalan, this is the unscented. The one that I've got at home is uh, lavender and I'm already almost halfway through it. So I thought I'd pick up some unscented for when I'm, I, I think, I can't remember who it was now, said that unscented wool wash is generally better to use if you're worried about um, uh, dyes running or um, like bleeding in your yarn because sometimes it's the scent in the wool wash that, um, encourages yarn bleeding. I'm not entirely sure if that's true or not, but I thought it's worth having some unscented anyway. I picked up one of their little Lime Brand branded tape measures. You can never have too many of those. And, oh, yeah, on a needle gauge. And this is the tag for the sock blockers in case you wanted to know. I also found these, um, I saw them at Nitty City as well. They also had the same brand in case you were wondering. So 
So that's what I got from Lime Brand. Then I also popped into Michael's um, quickly to grab a few things. I needed some non-knitting related craft supplies. Um, nothing major, just like a few little bits that I can't necessarily find as easily in um, barring. So I thought I'd grab it while I was here. And checked out their yarn section, and obviously it's most, mostly acrylics and stuff. But I picked up a couple of skeins of Patton's Croy socks. One in this, oh, I don't know, I can't really see that too well. But it's sort of like a heathery, a heathered um, grey colour. It's called uh, Gentry Grey. It's sort of like a charcoal, charcoal y colour. It's not a solid black, basically. And then I did also pick up a skein of coal, which is black pretty much. And so this is, doesn't have the heather, this is a solid colour and this is a more heathered one. You can sort of see the difference a little bit there. And I've picked this, these up solely to use them for contrast heel and toes in socks. So that's what that was. And I picked up two skeins of sugar and cream, one in purple, one in green. Obviously, these are my colours, what else would I get? Um, to try my hand at some either dishcloths or face, face, face cloths, washcloths sort of things because I've never tried it. People go on that they make great, go, go on about it, they make great gifts apparently and stuff, so I thought I'd give it a go um, and see how I liked it. Thought if nothing else, it wouldn't be bad to have a couple of dishcloths or washcloths out of them. So, I thought I'd give those a try, and pretty cheap and affordable. Um, then, some fabric that I got. Now, I had actually intended on going uh, to get more fabric while I was here, but I've decided not to buy more than I already have, and I'll show you what I have bought on this trip, because I was rather generously gifted a lot of fabric by my mum for as part of my birthday present this year. So um, I'll have to show that to you when I get back to Bahrain because that is in the bag that's currently sat in London <laughs> that I'll be picking up on my way back through. Um, and now I have quite a sizable fabric stash so I'm going to try and work my way through some of that before I purchase more fabric. Um, and also because fabric weighs quite a bit, uh, a lot more than yarn does, so I didn't want to weigh down my suitcase too much. Um, so the fabrics that I got, I'm really excited about these ones. I went, we went to uh, the City Quilter in New York. That's the bag with the information on it. It's 133rd West 25th Street. If you just Google the City Quilter, it'll come up, and it's on Google Maps as well. And they have a range of New York prints that are exclusive to the City Quilter. You can't get them anywhere else. And I picked up two of the prints for bags. One is this one, which I will open up and show you, which I love. Oh, that's upside down. There we go. I love that. I think this will make awesome project bags. Um, yeah, I can't wait to cut into this. This will be so much fun. And I got another one that I picked up was the and I had to get this, and you'll know, know why as soon as I show you. It's their Times Square print, the Times Square fabric. Because of course we were staying in Times Square, so of course I have to get that. And I've totally forgot to mention this at the beginning. I'm really sorry if you can hear all the noise and traffic from outside. It doesn't seem to matter where we are. You, all you can hear is traffic outside, but I guess that's Times Square for you. Um, but yeah, I'm. So really excited about this print as well and then and this was rather funny because I came to New York and I bought fabric with London on it it literally is a map of London I'm so excited by this one I've been looking for something like this for a while now and I've never I've not been, not found it anywhere online so it's basically a map of London I'm really excited to get this done up into bags as well Basically, I'm just really excited to make bags now. Um, got a lot of plans. But yeah, so that's what I got fabric-wise, and I'm really happy with the choices that I made. There were so many beautiful fabrics 
in that store. We were there for quite a while. <laughs> Perry would testify if he, he was, he was here to talk about it. We were found him a chair in the corner and he sat down, he even took his laptop out and started doing some work. Um, while well, I spent about an hour wandering back and forth through the shop, picking up bolts of fabric and then putting them back and then picking up other ones and putting those back. I had, I have never faced such a case of decision paralysis as I have on this trip. Every place I go to, I'm just overwhelmed by all the choices because I'm not used to having so much choice. Um, and it's just a case of uh, mind just blank and cannot focus. Um, anyway, yesterday morning I met up with one of the lovely viewers of the podcast, Tonya, who I did a swap with a while back and she sent me a couple of project bags and we did a swap for project bags. I met up with her and her little boy, her youngest was with her and we met up in um, New York and we went yarn shopping to a couple of places for the morning and just before we left she gave me this little card, really cute card for my birthday. And inside it, she'd added these. Little, she'd included these little stitch markers that she's made. And how cute and adorable are these? So there's butterflies, and the other one has little, so like sea creatures on them. There's a seahorse, there's turtle, there's shells, an anchor, and what's that one? Another seashell, and the butterfly ones. And there's each of them, there are four regular stitch markers and then one progress keeper on them. Which I think are really cute. So thank you so much, Tanya. And uh, like you said in your note, you can't have too many stitch markers. You can never have enough. Um, yeah, and that's all I'm going to show you for acquisitions today. Because I realise I've already been chatting for ages and my voice is starting to go. But I thought I'd do a quick weekend review for you guys as well. Um, our London trip went amazingly well. I successfully surprised my dad, as most of you have probably seen on Instagram. And if you haven't, I will insert the clip for you guys here. Hello! Uh, Salam. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Reza. Hello. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so that went really well and as a bonus we surprised my brother as well. Um, I couldn't remember if I had told him or not that we were coming back when we were arranging the flights and stuff and I was talking to my mum about it and um, and she sort of inquired with my brother rather sort of um, without giving it away and figured out that he didn't remember or he didn't know about it. But I was pretty sure I had told him. Anyway. After we'd shown up and after he'd been surprised as well as my dad and all of that and calmed down a bit, we got to talking about it and then he remembered that I told him months ago that we were planning on doing this before we'd booked tickets or anything, but he's obviously just forgotten. Um, so that was fine. We uh, rather luckily got to travel in business class on the way to London. Now, one of the benefits that we have with Perry's current job is, I mean, this is actually pretty standard for um, expats who live and work in the Middle East, is part of the package you get with your job includes a flight, a return flight to your, to uh, wherever you're from. And usually, if you have a wife and kids or whatever, it will be for your whole family. It's not just for one person, It'll be, it would be for your whole family. And a lot of companies, my last company that I worked for and the current company I work for, that's just sort of baked into your salary. They kind of mon they kind of figure out the monetary value for that ticket and they just add it into your salary and you get paid it over the year. But other companies, what they do is they will book the flight for you. So you give them the dates and flight information for when you want to travel and they will book it for you. And then once you get to a, and again, depending on the company and de depending on your level within the company, that will determine whether it's an economy flight or a business class flight. And thankfully, for us anyway, um, part of Perry's package is that we get one business class return flight to London for the two of us every year um, that he works for the company. And so we decided, and it was getting to the point where Perry had been at the company for a year and we needed to use the flight, otherwise we'd lose it. So we decided to use it now when we were traveling and it was actually really good we meant we got to sleep on the way to London because it was an overnight flight 
and hopefully we'll get to sleep a bit on the way back because again it will be an evening to early morning flight and it's really quite nice when you actually get a fully flat, flat bed seat in um, on a plane to be able to sleep a bit um, so that was fun and again most of you guys probably saw the little video clip of me being all goofy on the plane playing with the little divider screen that goes up and down um, but on a slightly more down note my dad's jumper didn't fit I mean it fit he could wear it it just looks ridiculous <laughs> it's a bit too small uh, in fact I think my dad's a little bit bigger than I thought he was so um, what we've decided to do is he's going to give the jumper to his brother which is fine my uncle is slightly smaller than my dad and in, in a similar sort of proportions so it will suit him just fine my dad as it turns out wants a brown jumper and he wants the neckline to be a bit tighter a bit higher up so I'm gonna on the, I didn't have time to do it before we left but on the way back through London um, there's a lot of things I need to squeeze into this four hours I need to re I need to measure my dad so my mum's going to bring a measuring tape to the airport so I can take measurements off my dad this time rather than off his jumper so hopefully I'll get more accurate measurements this time and he picked out the yarn that he wanted so I'm using some Cascade 220 Superwash this time in a brown, I think it's chocolate it's called, colour um, I ordered that before I left so that should that's already arrived at my parents and my mum will stick that into the, into the duffel bag for me I tell you, the amount of logistical planning I have to do when we travel is ridiculous, um, but it all works out in the end. So that's that. I managed to meet up with Leah of the All You Knit Is Love podcast in London at Loop for a couple of hours on Friday afternoon, which was really lovely. It was so nice to get to hang out with her and pick some yarns and talk about things and catch up. And we also did a little, um, we swapped some goodies which was fun and again I'll have to show that to you next time because it's in the duffel bag in London um, and I also bought some pretty things from Loop which I will show you soon um, we had a collective family um, birthday lunch thing with my family and Perry's family uh, at a pub halfway between where both our families live so I mean, my family live in northwest London Perry's family live in East Sussex and uh, Isha, as it turns out, in South West London is relatively in the middle of both of us. So we met up at a pub there and we had a really lovely afternoon, chatted, ate lots of food and celebrated six out of eight people's birthdays between our two families. So that was a lot of fun. There was a lot of cake. My mum made um, birthday cakes for every, a, birth, a big birthday cake for my dad and little birthday rainbow cupcakes for everyone else. So that was fun. Um, we Our flight to New York was relatively uneventful, there was quite a bit of turbulence but it was fine. It was a seven hour flight. I think I watched about four films. I knit almost entirely the whole time on my shawl. I started out and the large shawl has 65 of these point repeats on the on the border. I by, When we got on the plane I'd done 17. By the time we got off the plane I had 15 left to do. So I had done like 35 or 40 repeats on the flight. So I had gotten a lot of it done and actually finished it um, that first evening we were in New York. Um, our first full day in New York was actually Labor Day on Monday. So a lot of the places that I wanted to go to and turned out to be closed, but it was fine. We still had a great time. Perry um, needed to buy some things so we got that stuff sorted and it was just nice to hang out for the day and wander around New York um we it was really funny we thought we'd take it easy on the first day and not walk too much and tire ourselves out which is always what we end up doing when we go on holiday and that's exactly what we did this time we ended up walking somewhere close to 15 kilometers that first day that we were here and did close to 10 kilometers on the second day and then yesterday I did think I took it a little bit easier I didn't walk as much and today's going to be even less so I've realized that I uh, I really can't walk that much um, over a long period of time like over over several days I don't realize it at the time I'm fine to begin with but then in the morning the next day I um, my leg is really painful it's difficult to walk at first and then um, 
it's quite swollen at the moment as well. I've, I've bought a bandage to wrap it so I've so it's got a little bit more support when I'm walking around and stuff but I do need to remind myself that I can't walk like that all the time so today and tomorrow I'm going to be taking it easy I'm trying not to do too much walking and to rest my leg a little bit more because Saturday is going to be quite a busy day um, <clears throat> so sorry back to this week yesterday morning I met up with Tonya like I said we went to Nitty City and The Yarn Company which are both really close to each other two little yarn stores um, near West 80th Street, I think, and Broadway. And then in the afternoon, I met up with Kristen from uh, the Yarngasm podcast and Full and Vine Yarns at Brooklyn General for the afternoon. And that was a lot of fun. We got to hang out for a couple of hours and chat about yarn and all sorts of other fun things. And that was a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing her again on Saturday at her trunk show, which that should be that's going to be so much fun. And I realise now that by the time you see this, all of this will have happened by now. All these things that I'm talking about in future tense will have happened, and you'll have probably seen pictures of it on Instagram by now. But anyway, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm sure we had an amazing time. <laughs> I'm also going to be meeting up with the lovely Sarah on Saturday morning. She is one of the viewers of my podcast, and we've been chatting quite a bit over the last couple of months uh, or last few weeks it feels like a lot longer but um, just because we seem to get on pretty well with each other and um, it's really funny she ordered some things for me to, to my parents for me to bring over for her and I've ordered a few things over here for her to her house for her to bring for me so um, <laughs> it's quite funny so we're sort of helping each other out with that in that respect so that's good I'm looking forward to seeing her on Saturday and we will be um, or we will have yarn crawled around Manhattan by then. We'll start out at Gage Intention in the morning um, to see Kristen and her trunk show. And I believe there are a few other people coming to the trunk show, so I'm looking forward to meeting them there as well. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to that. As for today, I after finishing filming this, hopefully I'll be able to get some of the editing done before I have to leave but then I will be going up to New Jersey. I say up to, it's just over the bridge. Um, the company that I work for, um, our head office is in New Jersey, just over the bridge, over the river from Manhattan. Um, so I either mistakenly or not mistakenly told my boss I was gonna be in New York. So he was like, oh, come to the office, say hi to everyone. and. You know, we'll go out for lunch or something. So that's what I'm doing, going in for going in to have some lunch with them today. So that'll be fun. It's always I do enjoy the people I work with and it's nice to see them in person every now and again as well. Um and then tomorrow I'm hoping to meet up with a uh, fellow ex Dubai <laughs> knitter. Um she used to live in Dubai I believe and was uh, used to go to a knitting group that I went to. I never actually met her before. She left before I joined the knitting group and um, so when I said I was coming to New York the ladies from the knitting group were all like oh you should meet up with Stephanie, you should meet up with her while you're there. So I reached out to her and we should be meeting up tomorrow for a bit so that should be that should be fun. I'm looking forward to hanging out with another knitting friend and, uh, and yeah that's pretty much it. Today, like I said today's going to be a pretty relaxed day. I'm probably just gonna, after I get back from lunch, it'll probably be quite late in the afternoon by then and I'll probably just hopefully get around to finish editing this podcast. I have my blog post to do and a few other bits I, I need to get the, although by the time you see this, this pat, my shawl will be well on the way of being test knit, hopefully. I still need to send the pattern out to my testers so hopefully that will go out I'll be able to get that out to them today or tomorrow morning at the latest it's pretty much finished I'm just I don't know I'm not 100% happy with how it's formatted at the moment so I need to tweak it a little bit I think and I realize I keep cutting my head off a little bit at the top but I hope you guys don't mind um yeah that pretty much covers it and so thank you all so much for tuning in if you have any questions for me please let me know either in the comments uh, for this video on the Rav in the episode thread on Ravelry, or I have a questions and questions and suggestions thread 
on the group as well so you can leave your questions there for me I'll get to them in the next podcast um thank you all so much for tuning in and coming back week after week to hang out with me and if you're new thank you so much I hope you enjoyed it um yeah I oh another thing I meant to apologize for I know I said I was going to try periscoping whilst I was on holiday and try and film bits when I was out and about and honestly like I said I've just been so overwhelmed and I'm terrible I have all these really great plans and then always forget about them in the moment because I'm just overwhelmed by the situation if that makes sense so I'm hoping I'll remember on Saturday to film some bits so I can share you, share with you guys in the next episode. So fingers crossed I remember. <laughs> Alright, so take care. Thanks again and I hope you have a lovely week. Bye!